remind you from time to time that the God we serve is worthy to be praised. Amen. It's good to hear praise and worship songs, but it's also good that we praise Him ourselves. Yes. Yes. It's also that we give Him glory, we give Him adoration ourselves. Amen. Amen. This morning's scripture is found in 2 Samuel, the 18th chapter. I want to read it here in verses 19 to 32, but I want to park in verse 21. Amen. 2 Samuel 18, 19. Eight, cha cha 2 Samuel chapter 18, verses 19 to 32. And it reads on this line. Then Amon, son of Zadok, said, Let me run and carry tidings to the king that the Lord has delivered him from the power of his enemies. Joab said to him, You are not to carry the tidings today. You may carry tidings another day. But today you shall not do so, because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to a Cushite, Go tell the king what you have seen. The Cushite bowed before Joab and ran. And Ahimaaz, son of Zadok, said again to Joab, Come what may, let me also run after the Cushite. And Joab said, Why will you run, my son, seeing that you have no reward for the tithe? Come what may, he said, I will run. Mm. So he said to him, run. Then Amos ran by the way of the plain and outran the Cushite. Mm -hmm. Now David was sitting between the two gates. Mm -hmm. The citadel went up to the roof of the gate by the wall, and when he looked up, he saw a man running alone. Mm -hmm. The citadel shouted and told the king. The king said, if he's alone there, there's some titans in his mouth. He kept on coming and drew near. Then the citadel saw another man running. And the citadel called to the gatekeeper and said, See another man running alone? The king said, He also is bringing tidings. Mm -hmm. Then the citadel said, I think that the running of the first one is like the running of Amos, the son of Zadok. The king said, He's a good man, and he comes with good tidings. Mm -hmm. Then Amos cried out to the king, All is well. He's prost he prostrate himself before the king with his face to the ground and said, Blessed be the Lord your God, who has delivered up the men who have raised their hands against thee, my lord the king. The king said, Is it well with the young man Absalom? Amos answered, When Joab sent your servant, I, I saw a great tumult, but I do not know what it was. The king said, Turn aside and stand here. So he turned aside and stood still. Then the Cushite came. And the Cushite said, Good tidings to my lord the king. For the Lord has vindicated you this day, delivering you from the power of all who have rose up against you. The king said to the Cushite, It is well with the young man, Absalom. The Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to do you harm be like unto that young man. I want to talk from the thought, the Cushite message. Mm. Verse 21 says, Then Joab said to the Cushite, Go, tell the king what you have seen. And the Cushite bowed before Joab and ran. Right. The Cushite message. Right. You may be seated just for a little while. Yeah. Thank you, and this will probably be the briefest sermon I'll say in 2018, <laughs> but just for a little while. And try to do some encouragement to the young people that were here mm -hmm. to encourage them. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All wise and everlasting God, again I come and ask you, God, to take me down into the midst of your love. Saturate me with your spirit. Cover me with your blood. Hide me behind your cross. Stop my stammering tongue that I'll speak with simplicity, clarity, and manner with power. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. When David's son Absalom was killed in battle, a Cushite was selected to carry the heartbreaking news to David. Who were the Cushites who were so frequently mentioned in the Bible? The term Cush was a name given by the Egyptians in their by their southern neighbors. The ancient Hebrews also used the Egyptians' term to describe people from the south, from the interior region of Africa. Instead of using the, using the term Cush, the ancient Greeks gave them the name Ethiopian, which means burnt faces. And when the Ancient fathers planted the Christian faith in the sub-Saharan 
Africa in the 6th century AD, they described the inheritance of that region as Nubia. When Islam began to spread in the area around 700 AD, the Muslims described the era with the Arabic term Balal of Sadaim, which means the land of the blacks. And when the Europeans became, be, began to colonize Africa, they adopted the term Negro for the multiplicity of even new people they saw, which is a Spanish-Portuguese term coming from the Latin root Niger, which means black. Hence, the Kushites, Ethiopians, and Nubians are essentially the same folk. Yes. So they call, so so they were called Negroes, and the modern African Americans are descendants of this noble ancient people whose presence is clearly felt in the Bible and whose influence is so widely spread in the world of iniquity. Yes. Community this morning in 2 Samuel, the 18th chapter, the 21st verse, the spotlight falls on Kushite who was a member of David's private army. The Kushite may have been the only African who fought for David. But according to the eminent Old Testament African-American scholar, Dr. Coffin, David's private army of which the Kushite was a member was composed particularly of Philistines who had come from Crete and blacks from Ethiopia and Egypt from the Christian population. Some of the soldiers were of the early time. This Kushite was an independent soldier. He was not a slave. He was one of, he, one of the great myths that have been circulated is that wherever we see black folk in the scripture or read about them in current ancient times, they are slaves or either servants. But before the rise of the color prejudice, the ancient blacks were held in high regard by the people of that time. The Greek historian Herodias and the Jewish historian Josephus speak vividly of the ancient Ethiopians referred to them as among the world's most beautiful people. So don't ever forget that from way back, you were called beautiful. Don't forget from way back, black was beautiful. Don't forget from way back, no matter what they call you now, we were born a beautiful people. This Kushite soldier, there was just that, a soldier. He was not a servant, he was not a slave. And at this point in his life, David was a supposed, was supposed king and was running for his life. The individuals with David were those who chose to be with him. The Cushite chose David over his son Absalom. Mm -hmm. Thus, he was devoted at a time when David's own son and many of his trusted counselors and colleagues were against him. Mm -hmm. Not only was the Cushite messenger devoted, he was also duty. Mm -hmm. The Cushite had to carry an unpleasant message one that would deeply grieve the king to whom he had chosen to be devoted to. Mm -hmm. But carry the message he needed yeah. because that was his duty. Uh -huh. That was his duty, but that what do, that what duty is, that's what duty is all about. Doing what we're supposed to do even when we would prefer not to do or do something else. Someone else, however, was not assigned this duty, but we must be dutiful to do the difficult. Not only as a Kushite messenger, not only was the Kushite messenger devoted and dutiful, he was also dependent. A message such as the one that he had to carry could not be entrusted to just anybody. One was needed who was diligent in carrying the message and who can give the right message the right way. Have you ever played the game, telephone? And if I tell somebody, I tell Carl all in the back, here's the word. By the time he gets to the front, there's a whole different word. <laughs> have have y'all been playing that yet? Yeah. Uh, I'm just checking, just checking. <laughs> one was needed, one was needed who was diligent in carrying the message and who would give the right message in the right way. David's general Joab selected the Cushite because he knew that he could depend on him to diligently carry the message and carry it in the right way. The Kushite was devoted. The Kushite was duty. The Kushite was dependable, and the Kushite was determined. And as he was running, Ahamah, another messenger, overtook him and passed him. The Kushite, however, continued to run with the message that was given unto him. He was determined to take his message to the king, though others were ahead of him. It's a good thing that the Kushite was determined to carry the message because when Ahamah had reached the king. He had nothing to say. Everybody running don't got nothing to say. But when you got something to say, stay on course to do what you need to do. And it's the same way with our young people. Stay on course and do your work. Stay on course and do your study. Stay on course and do your reading. Stay on work. Stay on course and go to class on a regular basis. Stay on course and do your homework. Stay on course and 
do what you need to do because everybody ain't running with a message. You got a message because you want to complete school and then go to a high level of learning. You want to complete the high learning and then do a good job that you can take care of. Everybody running ain't got nothing to say. They could be your friends, they could be your buddies, they could be your boys. Some of them ain't got nothing to say. He was just running to be running. And if the Cushai had quit running because someone was ahead of him, David would have not received the message that David needed to hear. But because the Cushai was determined and kept on running, he was able to reach his goal and deliver the message himself in the way that the king taught him to say. Church, let us never forget that we're the latter-day Christians that have a message to deliver. We have a message that African-American men and boys are still the most suspect. They're still the most feared. They're still the most misunderstood. They're still the most falsely accused. They're still the most vulnerable males in the society, and they need to hear a message yes. that's going to empower them, that's going to encourage them, that's going to engage them to be the best Thank you, that they God. possibly can be. Yes. Yes, we have a message. That African American male youth need to hear lest we tragically build a fragile manhood on the continued domination and oppression of girls and women, hmm. mimicking the sim simple sexism of many men in this world today. We have a message that African American girls and boys who bear the double burden of sexism and racism and are sometimes have a triple jeopardy of poverty, sexism, and race, they need to hear a message. Yeah. I got a message this morning. I got a message from Rosa Parks. I have learned over the years that when one mind is made up, this diminishes fear, knowing what must be done does, uh, does away with any fear. I got a message this morning from ML King. Change does not roll in on, on wheels of inevitability, but comes through continued struggle. I got a message from George Washington Carver. When you come to do the common things of life in an uncommon way, you will command the attention of the world. I got a message this morning from Maya Angelou. You, can, you may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can decide not to be reduced to them. I got a message from Oprah Winfrey. I'm here. I, I am where I am because if I crossed other bridges. Other people made a bridge for me that I'm able to cross over. And that's why I stopped by to encourage the young people. Your mama, your daddy, put a bridge that you can cross over. Your grandmother, your grandfather, put a bridge that you can cross over. Go on and get your learning. Go on and get your education. Go on and be all that you can be. And don't be bothered by all the stuff that's going on around. It's going to be there. It's not going to get out of your way, but you got to sacrifice. You got to realize that obedience is better than sacrifice. Thank you, God. I got a message this morning. Thank you, God. It was a journey of truth. Mm -hmm. Truth is powerful, yes. and it will prevail. I got a message this morning from Booker T. Washington. Yes. Success is to be measured not by so much by the position that one has to reach in life, as by the obstacles which one has to overcome to succeed in life. I got a message from Dr. May Jemison. Never be limited by other people's limit, limited imaginations. I got a message from President Barack Obama. Yeah. Change will not come if you wait for it. For some other person or some other time, we are the ones who have been waiting for it, and we are the change that we wait for. Yeah. Uh, I got another message from Frederick Douglass. I prefer to be true to myself, even at the hazard of incurring the ridicule of others, rather than to be false and to incur my own abhorrence. I got a message from Thurgood Marshall. In recognizing the humanity of our fellow human beings, we pay ourselves the highest tribute. I got a message from Arthur Ashe. Yes. Racism yes. is not an excuse yes. to yes. do, racism is not an excuse to not do the best that you can. Yes. I got a message from Jackie Robinson. Life, yes. is, is, life is not important except the impact that it has yes. on other people's lives. Yes. And remember, Duke Ellington has a message. There are two kinds of worries. Those you do something about and those you can't. Don't spend so much time on the ladder. And I got a message from Jesse Owens. Yes. Find the good in all around you. 
find and showcase and you'll start believing in it. You got to yes. begin believing in yourself that yes. you can be yes. all that yes. you can be. Yes. You got yes. to begin to believe in your mama and daddy that they're providing for you. Your yes. job is to go to school and get A's and B's. Their yes. job is to go to work that they can provide for you. Yes. Your job yes. is to study. Their job is to be a good parent to you. Yes. Your job is to hand your work in on time as they do the, what they need to do to provide for you. Realize you got a job too. You don't get a paycheck at the end of the week, but after every cycle, you get a report card. And yeah, those A's and yeah, B's yeah, will yeah, add up the yeah, dollars. Yeah, and if you continue yeah. to get A's and B's, you'll continue to get more dollars. And you'll realize when high school is over, you can get a full academic scholarship to go somewhere yeah, to better yeah, yourself. Yeah, and if you do well in higher learning, you'll get another scholarship to go into another advanced degree. But you got to realize you got to invest in yourself. You can't invest in your boys. You can't invest in the posse that you be with. You got to invest in yourself because everybody around you may be running, but they don't got a mess in their mouth. I encourage you to keep on running because there's a message in your mouth. Study that word. Study that lesson that you can be all that you can be. Don't, don't depend. Don't, don't beat yourself up by your social economic situation. You can come up out of that. Yes, if you work hard at it. Thank if you work God. hard at it. So let me pause here to tell you a story. There was a young man who was born and his mother was not able at the time to care for him. She put him in an orphanage and a family got the young man out of, out of the orphanage and raised the young man. The young man went to school and did, did the best he could. Yes, he got a scholarship to play football at the University of Miami in the state of Ohio. And one, when he got the call, a man came in a beautiful car to the school to talk to him. And the boy was, it was amazed by the beautiful luxury car the man was driving. The boy did not know that that man was his biological father. But he went on to the University of Miami, set all types of records, and then began to play football in the NFL. Well, once he got to the NFL and had his own family, his mind said, I need to find out who my biological mother is. And he began to do the research, and he found his biological mother. And he went to the house, arranged an appointment, and went to the house and talked to the woman. He wanted to know, why did you give me up? And she began to explain to him, because of the difficulty that was in her life, she could not raise a child, and she wanted to give it to a family that would give him a proper nurturing. Yeah. Well, he said, now that I know who my mother is, can you tell me who my father is? Well, we don't speak now. He's got a whole other family. He's a married and doing all. Uh, but I, I'll tell you who it is. And when he told him the man's name, the man was the coach of the football team that, that trained him mm, wow. to be a pro athlete. Wow. And when he got them all together, they had a grand celebration. Mm. Because even though he had a foster mother, he wanted to know his biological mother. He wanted to know his biological father. But the good news is, I, I, I went ahead of myself. When the boy got to the college and met the coach, the, the man told the boy, I'm not your father, but I'm going to be a father to you while you're here at the university. Not knowing he was training up his own son. Wow. So one of the first things I learned, I wasn't even say, one of the first things I learned is I'm not father and mother. You think you can be a Take care of your mama. Take care of your dad. Yeah. Just like they take care of you. Because it's going to turn around. Uh -huh. You keep living. It's going to turn around. Yeah. That's why you got to be the best that you can be that you can yeah. give back. Yeah. 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 So as God to send the children, as God to redeem children, we got a message to carry. We got a true message that, that, won't, that we won't have to retract. It's a message that will not degrade any community or deprive any people. It's a message of hope not a hate. It's a message of love and not of lies. It's a message of salvation and not a smoke. It's a message of deliverance and not division. It's a message of reconciliation and not rejection. It's a message of help and not hindrance. It's a message of restoration and not fear. It's a message of honesty and not hypocrisy. Community. It's a message about God's delivering power. It's about Jesus' cleansing power. It's about the Holy Spirit keeping power. It's a story of a God who said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's a story about Jesus who said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to bring good tidings to the poor and he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and sent me to proclaim 
The release of the captives and recovery of sight to the blind is the story of the Holy Ghost who gives us fruit to sustain us and gifts for serve. It's a story about a devil defeated and death to mind. It's a story about a sovereign God who keeps promises and a Bible whose truth endures through all generations. We must have a message for the world because the world needs to hear what we have to say. And to give this message to we have to be devoted, devoted to God who has brought us to this place, devoted to Jesus Christ who saved us, devoted to the Holy Ghost who has filled us, and devoted to the Word of God that will guide us, devoted to the church that has nourished us, and devoted to the leadership that has served us, devoted to each other as we help each other bear our burdens, devoted to others who have supported us, and devoted to the kingdom of God which frees us. We got to be devoted to the cause of Jesus Christ. Yeah. We gotta help these mothers raise these children. We gotta help these fathers yeah. raise these children because we are a village, and all of us got a part to play in these children's lives. And not only must we be devoted, but we must also be dutiful. Sometimes we have to serve when we would rather relax. We gotta stand when we rather sit down. We got to go when we rather be still. We got to run when we rather rest. We gotta speak when we rather be silent. We can be coming by when we rather be. We got to do something around here. Now we got to be encouraging to the kids because somebody helped raise us. We didn't get here on our own back. We didn't pull up our pants by our own boots. Somebody helped raise us. And we got to help raise these children that help be productive citizens in the society in which we, even in the crisis that we're going through, even in all the insanity that's going on around, these children can still be raised right. These children still can be productive. These children can still be a student. These children still go to the best of school. Yes, but we got to empower them now yes, to think of the best. Yes, Don't let your condition dictate where you're going. Yeah. Yes. But study. Show thyself a fool. Yes. Give me this. We know what we are promised by the Lord. Mm -hmm. We know what the Lord calls us to do. He calls us to be dutiful. Devoted unity through Yahweh. Duty is not something we do when it's conveniently easy. It's doing our due diligence, making our contributions throughout the year, in season and out of season, through praise and through criticism, through good and through bad. Where would we be if others, where would we be if others before us hadn't done their duty? Jesus did his duty as a son. And, he saw, and, and we, we, we saw it in the heavenly, and the heavenly Father in him. He did his duty as a Savior when he redeemed each and every one of us. He did, he did his duty as a friend, and he received us another chance. He did his duty as a teacher as we read his word on a daily basis. Not only must we be devoted and dutiful, but we must be dependable. How dependable are you? How dependable is your friendship? Do you forsake them when they come to an inconvenience? How dependable is your commitment? Are you fair weather running? How dependable is your faith? Will any rumor or trial bring doubt to you? God is looking for some dependable folk. People like Daniel, who won't stop praying even in the lion's den. Folk like the three Hebrew boys, who won't bow down even if it means to be cast in the fire and furnace. People like Paul who keep on working even when the thorn, when the thorn is in his flesh and it won't go away. People like John the Revelator who stood in the banishment and still saw the glory of God. And like Jesus whose love, devotion, and duty and dependability on Calvary would not kill him. And like the Cushite message, to bring the message to our destination, we must not only be devoted, we must not only be dutiful, and we must not only be dependable, but we must be determined to run on and see what the end's going to be. Yes. Sometimes we may get discouraged yes. because others seem to be, be, be out running us and are getting ahead of us. That's all right. If you have a message to tell, a story to share, and a testimony to give, or a song to sing, or a service to render, keep on running over the hills and through the deep valleys through the highways and byways, keep on running. When nobody else is around you to encourage you, keep on running. Yeah. Keep on running because the message and the best the message and the mission will be given to you. Yeah. Though others may run ahead, they can't tell the message that you can. Keep on running with determination.
nation because the king waits to hear what you got to say. And that's why in the final analysis, we got to keep on running. We know that the king stands at the finish line and we want to give a good report. And we don't want everybody who, we don't, we don't know everybody who will be there to greet us when we come to the end of our year. But we do know this, that once somebody will be there, it will be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Somebody will be there waiting on him. He's a wonderful counselor and an almighty God. Somebody will be waiting to hear your word. He's the ancient of days and the bishop of my soul. That somebody will be there to meet you. He's the red rose of shadow. He's the bright and morning star. And he's the lily of the valley. I just need you to run on with your message. Children, run on with your learning. Run on with your schooling. Run on with your education. But just run on because there's somebody that's waiting to hear from you. And at the end of the day, you're going to be at a graduation. And you're going to graduate with honors. Then you're going to go to undergraduate. You're going to study there. And you're going to run on a little while longer. And run on a little while longer. And there's going to be a graduation. And you're going to graduate with honors. Then you're going to go to post-graduate school. And run on there. And run on there. That you can be the best that you can be. And you ain't got to work for nobody. You're going to be bright enough to start your own business. You're going to be an entrepreneur. And if you don't be an entrepreneur, you can be employed by somebody. But be all that you can be. I just stop by and encourage you to run on. I know it don't sound right now, but if you get your lesson, you'll see it in the by and by. If you study hard now, you'll work easy later. I just tell you now, if you spend time and you're learning now, you won't have to work as hard later. I just stop by and encourage you. Run on just a little while longer. Just run on. Run on. When ain't nobody else running, run. When ain't nobody else studying, study. When ain't nobody else reading, read. Cut that TV off. Put that video game down and get your lesson. It'll be time for you to have recreation time. But the time is now for you to study that you can be all that you need to be. Because the Bible says study a workman that need not to be ashamed, but able to write to provide a word of truth. And as you study in the Bible, you can study your lesson with diligence and with excellence. Yes. I just stop by to encourage you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Right. I don't know where you live. I grew up in the hood. <laughs> and we were fighting for our lives. Yeah, yeah. We had three opportunities in my community. You had to know how to fight, mm -hmm. go to jail, mm -hmm. or get an education. Mm -hmm. I chose the latter of the three. Yeah, very good. But folk all around me were going to jail. Folk all around me were fighting. Yeah. But I wanted to get an education. And I realized if I could get out, if I could get out of that community that I am, I could better myself. Yeah. And not only could I better myself, I could better my mom. That's right. Yeah. And I could better my other brothers. Yeah. Because yeah. being that I was at the top, I made way for the others. Yes. Yeah. And to God be the glory. Yeah. Be encouraged, young men. Yeah. Be encouraged, young men. Yeah. You can make a difference. Yeah. You can't see it now. But just continue to work hard. Just continue yeah. to be dedicated to your lesson. Just to be tended to honor and obey your mother and your father. Yes, God. And watch God work things out. Yes, you yes, you yes, you yes, I just want to share something else with you, young man. And you can look this up uh, when you can. And when you look it up, download it, put it in a frame, and put it in your room. All right? Y'all ain't saying nothing. I can't hear it. It's two of y'all there. I've only heard one yet. All right. The name of the poem is called If. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you. But make allowance for, for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting. Or being lied about. Don't deal in lies. Or being hated and don't give way to hate. And yet, don't look too good, nor talk too wild. If you can dream, and not make your dreams your master. If you can think, and not make your thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster, and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can barely hear the truth you have spoken, twisted by knives to make a trap for food, or watch the things you gave your life to, broken and stooped and built them up and worn out too. If you can make one heap with all your wings, 
and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginning and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerves into do to serve your turn long after they have gone. So hold on when there's nothing in you, except the wheel which says to them, hold on. And if you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foe nor loving friends can hurt you, if a man counts with you but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minutes with 60 seconds worth of distant run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And, with, and which is more, you will be a man, my son. Wow. Young man, next time you get in front of the computer, download this phone. And after you download it, put it in the frame. Put it on your wall. It will empower you for days to come. Yes, Whenever the day seems overwhelming, just read this. And realize you can make it through whatever you're going through. And realize, as I told my children, that if you do the homework, you do the study, and then you pray, God will give you all you need when it's time for an examination. But if you don't study and you don't read, God ain't got nothing to work. You can pray all you want. You got to you got to put something in to get some out. It's just like the bank. You got to deposit to get a withdrawal. Go to the bank and don't have no money, it's going to give you a sign, insufficient funds. Mm -hmm. I'm encouraging young men, be all that you can be. You can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, you can be a city councilman, you can be a mayor, you can be the head of a corporation, but you got to put the work in. Now, I understand you may want to play football, I understand you may want to play basketball, I understand you may want to play soccer, that's all well and good, do that. Those, that, that builds up your social skills. But put your mind on your education. Because days going to come when soccer going to be over. Days going to come when basketball going to be over. Days going to come when football is over. But as long as you got that education, you got a road map in front of you. A road map to success. So I just stopped by the church. I wish it was a hundred more of you here. But run on that you can see what the end is going to be. Mm -hmm. And realize, you know what taxes is once you get a job. Mm -hmm. You understand what deductibles are. You understand what life insurance is. You understand what medical insurance is. Because all that costs money. You, you understand paying your own light bill. You understand paying your own cable bill. You understand paying for the things that you need in the house. That you so easily take for granted. Realize you're sleeping on your mama's bed. That's a rented room. You paid your room, you ain't paying rent. You just attend. Hello. And they just kind enough to let you lay out. Okay. They just kind enough to let you come to the table and eat their food. Be they just kind it. enough to let you be under their lot. Oh, no, I, can I talk to you? Yes, oh, amen. Oh, I, I got a son, he's grown now. But he didn't want to pay no rent when he got on down. He didn't want to give him a little something. I, I didn't want his mama. Pay the light bill. Pay the cable. He didn't want to pay nothing. I wonder who took all the light bulbs out. <laughs> See, because consequences motivate change. I can yell at him all I want. I can beat him all I want. I can put him on time out all I want. But consequences, consequences motivate change. And you will do something for the better once you get some consequences. So I'd rather give you consequences at the high than a white man to get consequences behind some jail bars. Anything I can do to help, I'll be more than glad to. Amen. To support you, to pray for you, to even go to school when you've been bad. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind asking. Keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's because, and I'm not encouraging you to be bad or do something wrong, but it's very powerful when a male representative shows yes, up with you. Exactly. Whether it's your father, whether it's another male model. Because you need to know that somebody believes in you, even in your mistakes. Yes, somebody yes. believes in you. Yes, I'm not going to throw you away because you made a mistake, because God didn't throw me away. Yes, amen. amen. But we need somebody to journey with us. We need somebody to talk to. We need somebody that will listen to us from time to time. Yes, thank you. Yes. 
And I realized that in this message, Joe asked that he chose anybody. Mm -hmm. But he chose a black man to run the race. Mm -hmm. He chose a black man to carry the message. Thank you, God. And I believe in each one of you. You can't see it now, but you got a message. But the message becomes stronger as you work hard and get your work done. You should never come home from school and don't have your homework. That, that, that don't exist no more. Uh -uh. Every day you come home, there should be some reading that needs to be done. Yeah. If there's no algebra. If there's no algebra, there's some geometry that needs to be done. There's some English that needs to be done. There's some history that needs to be done. There's some social stuff. There's something that needs to be done. Ain't never, ain't never, ain't never an evening when you got a free night. But mama, they ain't give a But read ahead then. Yeah. If you ain't get them, read ahead so you be prepared when the new lesson comes in. Thank you, God. Always be ahead of the game. My mother would say, prepare for war in time of peace. Yeah. Didn't understand it. But when you get grown, they all come, they all come, they all come to be real to you. Yeah. Yeah. But I just stop by the way. Thank you, God. You can be anything you want to be if you're willing to put the work in. Yeah. And one thing I learned from my father, and you can ask Brother Carl when he comes, he learned from his father. Hard work ain't never killed nobody. Mm -hmm. Hard work has never killed anybody. Yes, whether it's physical labor or whether it's your reading or study. So I just stop by to encourage you. Be the best you can be. Thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.